Well, this is what happens, Packers, when you don't do anything for a week in free agency. We move on without you! Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to an episode of Packers, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom Grassi, and today we are going to be delving into the past so that we may look into a glorious future, that past being the Green Bay Packers draft history. Now, that being said, of course, throughout this entire week and the weeks that follow, if the Packers wind up signing somebody in free agency... I'll, of course, be making a video on it and keeping you updated, but we are going to start to pivot a little bit on this channel, and we're going to start focusing more on the draft. We'll be talk- look, talk- blah, blah, blah. We'll be looking at the Packers' top draft needs this week, as well as diving into some individual players that would be great fits for the Packers. And then from just about now, every single Monday through Friday till about the draft, uh, we're going to be doing a mix of mock draft videos, player breakdowns, etc. So, that being said, let's jump into it. So... This video, I actually recorded it a couple weeks ago, and then free agency happened, and you just kept, news just kept breaking, and I was going to wind up editing it and just throwing it out there, but things have changed uh, since recording that video, and I wanted to make sure I did some updates to it, and I think it just further exemplifies a problem that the Packers have had as late. The Green Bay Packers have been known for quite some time as being a great draft and developed team. Of course, under Ted Thompson, that was our bread and butter, right? It was that we didn't go out and we didn't spend a whole lot of money or any money on free agency, especially not often. Sometimes we would go out and get big guy, big name players. But for the most part is we drafted them. You know, we we gave them another contract and, and that was that. However, I would argue that, I mean... Recently, our our drafting hasn't been that great. So just to take a look from 2000, the 2010 draft to the 2016 draft, we only have five people left on the team. From, t- from the years 2010, the 2010 draft, all the way up to the 2016 draft, we still only have five members who are currently on this roster. And Brian Bulago was number one in 2010. He is gone. We have nobody from 2011. We have no one from 2012. The only one from 2013 is David Bakhtiari. Two from 2014, which is Devontae Adams and Corey Lindsley. Nobody from 2015. And then 2016, we have Kenny Clark and Dean Lowry because Blake Martinez and Kyler Fackrell have just left the team. So... That's not a lot of people. Now, obviously, if you go a little bit past that and look at the 2017 draft, we still have four people on the team. We have Kevin King, Montrevious Adams, Jamal Williams, and Aaron Jones. And then 2018, Jair Alexander, Josh Jackson, which who knows what's going on with that, Oren Burks, J.K. Scott, MBS, ESB, etc. So, I mean, obviously, you, you look at the past, like, two years, yeah, we still have a lot of those guys on the team just because we haven't cut them yet, even though we have made some cuts, right, of Jamon Moore, he's gone, um... And I think that this just highlights an issue that the Packers, if they are going to primarily stick with that draft and developing team, then they got to draft well. And I think that just years and years from this past decade of not drafting well has seriously hurt the Green Bay Packers and their ability to win championships. I mean, how many times have we talked about on this channel the fact that Aaron Rodgers hasn't had a defense, even though we've picked defense first rounders since 2005 all of our first rounders in 2005 have been on the defense in 2008 uh we didn't have one and we just spent a second and that was on jordy nelson so technically our first pick was a wide receiver but all in the first round has been on defense and how many of those guys have panned out Mm, let's see the last one that we've kept is 2016 and that is kenny clark who is up for a huge deal and that's not to say that the packers have all been busts, right? We're not just talking about like guys like Dayton Jones. I mean, because look, they've been able to get guys like Aaron Jones late in the draft. They've been able to get guys like David Bakhtiari late in the draft, Corey Lindsley. And now these are big names and the Packers have been able to find great gems of players in the later rounds. That's not the issue. The problem is, is that the guys that we are spending the most draft capital on, those guys are not staying on the team, which is a huge problem. Now, I just went from this past decade. Obviously, before that, we did hit a bunch of other guys, which was great. But 
for the most part, you know, there there are not a lot of people left on this team. Now, you could make the argument, you know, 2010, yeah, sure, Brian Bulaga, I mean, that's a long time, right? It's 10 years in the NFL, not all players are going to last that long, but I mean, like, we don't have anyone from five years ago, from 2015, and that's a significant problem. And so now, we're looking at it this year and saying, okay, are we going to go offense or defense in the first round? There are a lot of people who are saying that we need a wide receiver. We haven't addressed it in free agency. It's obvious that we he needs some targets, but at the same time, we need offensive line debt, especially at right tackle. We need an inside linebacker, but then again, I've said that for the history of the Packers, we've needed an inside linebacker. And so we're looking at this from the perspective of how is this going to guide the Packers forward? I think that the Packers, almost now more than ever, with the window of Aaron Rodgers, which is closing. It's not closed, but it is closing. We need to have a damn good draft, like now more than ever. Now, last year, obviously, we were able to get guys like Elton Jenkins. We were able to get uh, Savage, which was great. But then again, we also got guys like Rashawn Gary, who I'm not saying is a bust. However, we already had Preston Smith and we already had Zadarius Smith. And so we're going to need to see a whole lot more of Rashawn Gary. And so with that window closing, with a lot of these high profile or high paid free agents that are currently on our team. And in addition that next year in 2021, a lot of people become unrestricted free agents. It just feels like that the green Bay Packers, if they're going to go back to getting to the championships, if they're going to go back to championship football, they're really going to have to do it from the draft, considering how low that our spendable cap is right now. And considering we're going to need a lot of that money to re-sign Kenny Clark. I mean, we're, we're in a pickle right now. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's also worth noting that multiple of these guys that I've mentioned are up on their contract years starting next year. So it's going to be interesting to see if this number continues to decline. But I'm curious as to what kind of team you see the Green Bay Packers being. Do you think with Brian Gutenkunst at the helm that we're going to be more of a dip our toes into the free agency more often as we did last year? Or are we going to kind of get back to that draft and development? Um, I'm curious of your thoughts, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. Because the, at the end of the day, Packers need to draft better, damn it. Let me know what you think. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy on all social media. See down below. Check out Packcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the Patreon members who are at Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy. Coach Season 2 premiere is coming out tonight at 7 p.m. I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go Pack Go.